Well, February is Heart Health Awareness Month. The Yukon Health Center has a program, though, that helps detect problems connected to the rhythm of the heart. And Dr. Chris Pickett is the co-director of the Heart Rhythm Program. Good morning. Thanks Good morning. for coming on the show. Sure, pleasure to pleasure. meet you. Thank you First, let's just talk about the Heart Rhythm Program and mm -hmm. really what it does. Yeah. Uh, so we specialize in uh, diagnosis and management of heart arrhythmias, which is an abnormal heart rhythm or an electrical problem uh, with the heart. Uh, as opposed to people I think are more common with the concept of a heart attack right. where uh, you have a blockage in one of the arteries that feeds blood to the heart muscle. This is dealing with electrical problems of the heart. So let's talk about um, heart arrhythmia. Is it genetic? Mm -hmm. What are the risk factors? How do you know if yeah. you're uh, a So one of, the, one of the enjoyable things about the field for me is that it really happens in many, many different people. So okay. it can happen in young people, uh, sometimes for genetic causes. Uh, commonly it happens in people who have other heart conditions, have had heart attacks or have high blood pressure. Uh, it really sort of comes in, in the entire population. But it doesn't have to be genetic, I mean. Really. No, not at all, no, no. There's, there are some genetic conditions, but that's actually a relatively small proportion of the, the arrhythmias we deal with. So how do you know? Like, what are symptoms? Are there symptoms? Yeah, it's interesting. So there's lots of very different symptoms. Uh, some of the most common arrhythmias actually come without any symptoms whatsoever and are important to diagnose because people can be at risk of a stroke because of those uh, arrhythmias. Uh, people also can commonly have episodes of passing out or they can right. have a sensation of palpitations where they feel that the heart's racing. Uh, they're just sitting there watching TV and it feels like they're running a marathon. Uh -huh. uh, you can have symptoms just of being tired and short of breath when you exert yourself for unclear reasons. It really can present in many different ways. So if you're getting these symptoms, what should one do? Uh, so uh, if you're concerned, the best thing is always to go to your doctor. The, okay. the best way of diagnosing one of these conditions is having an EKG, uh, which can be done in the doctor's office. Uh, it just takes a few seconds. Okay. Sometimes if, if the episodes are sporadic and happen intermittently, actually we have patients go home with uh, portable heart monitors, which they can wear right. sort of, uh, for up to a month at a time sometimes to make the diagnosis. So if someone's um, familiar with this, a little scared to come in, mm -hmm. talk about exactly what an EKG is. And okay. if they come in, yep. what's a normal one compared to something that's yep. abnormal or life-threatening? Uh, so uh, an EKG is just putting some uh, electrodes on the chest, and okay. it's a very quick and non-invasive way of measuring the electro electrical activity of the heart at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, you know you have to go to medical school and right. uh, learn course. how to interpret it, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's really quite quick and easy to do, at least as an initial way of assessing people's, people's symptoms. Okay, and if one is abnormal. <laughs> What do you do? What, what happens from there? Well, it depends on the, the type of arrhythmia after you make the diagnosis. Some are just a nuisance, and you can just reassure the patients that, you know, this is okay, and this is something almost everyone has mm -hmm. and will never cause you any problems, but might cause you to have a symptom now and, now and then. And some uh, people are rushed off the emergency room right away because it can be potentially life-threatening in some situations. If you have this, is this a case where you get, like, a heart defibrillator or something implanted <clears throat> into your heart? Yeah, there's lots of different ways we treat them. So for some of the the dangerous life-threatening arrhythmias, we actually put a defibrillator in our patients, and that's uh, an, an implantable device that goes inside the patient. So we're all familiar with, you know, watching ER and right, having paddles put on people's chests and having them shocked. And some people who are at high risk of having these life-threatening arrhythmias, you don't want to hope that they can get to an emergency room in time. So they have one of these implantable devices put in that's sort of an insurance policy that's there with them 24-7, 365. Right. So yeah. for Heart Health Awareness Month, your best advice, even if you're having the smallest symptoms, it's mm -hmm. better safe to yeah. come in and just get checked out because yeah. no harm in coming in, no, right? not at all. All right. No. Thank you so Great. much, Dr. Chris Pickett. We really Thank appreciate you. it. My pleasure. Guys, Logan, okay, over here. Okay, appreciate that. Thank you. It is 742. We've got a lot more coming up. We're going to talk to Hartford Business.